So I'm going to share. Okay, I'm going to share the screen. The first thing, of course, I am going to introduce you uh, the program, the program for the for the day. Just the access to that is it's not that comfortable as it should be. Right. Is there any way? Is there any way of? Okay, that's it. That's the one I wanted. Okay, basically, as you know, uh, we are going to have now a session which is entirely devoted to an introduction about what the masters is about because obviously our masters is about architecture contemporary architecture design and urban design but from a very precise approach on design research and this is what we're going to discuss and we're going to give you that introduction during this first hour uh, in that hour i will deliver 20 minutes presentation about the general concepts of design research and how they are applied in our masters then uh, the model leader my colleague Marie Davidova will give a 15 minutes presentation on her specific approach on design research on her design unit, uh, Synergetic uh, Landscape. And then we're going to have a, a short 15 minutes uh, overview of the best design uh, research uh, dissertation thesis projects from last year, where you're going to see first examples about what is the level that you're going to reach by the end of the year and as well, examples, concrete examples about what do we mean by design research. Uh, and then uh, the last part will be a 15 minutes uh, Q&A uh, session for you to ask questions. Those questions should be entirely focusing on design research, on what we are on the topic about that we're going to cover. Then uh, after that session, Marie Davidova will deliver her uh, introduction of uh, an IC of precedence uh, core module from 11 to 11.30. Okay, so let's start, let's get started with uh, my introductory presentation. As I started introducing yesterday when I, uh, sorry, on Monday when I introduced the course, I made this about design-led research. And the first thing, you know, to understand it, is to understand first what is research, isn't it? Research is always going beyond established knowledge. So it's all about being innovative. It's all about exploring new things, things that are not yet uh, explored by anyone else. Therefore, that is research. Research is not, therefore, studying things that are already, uh, that are already published and already covered by someone. Therefore, the first thing that you need to understand is that research is directly innovative, is directly going beyond the final boundaries of the current knowledge. That is very important. This is what you're going to do in your units this year. You're going to be explorers of knowledge. And what is design-led research? What is, in short words, design research? It's basically how you need to use design as a tool for advancing in knowledge, how design in multiple ways can constitute it by itself an exploratory tool to advance in knowledge, to explore something new. In order to advance in knowledge, research to be innovative, you need to gain first, obviously, an extensive knowledge of what has been done in your design research topic that would be related to your ADR, Architecture Design Research, and as well, the advanced module later on, Design Thesis, Design Research Units, because they, your units are uh, going to be under first, Architecture Design Research module, and then in stage two, under Design Thesis. Therefore, that's why it's very important, guys, that uh, next Monday you will be listening very carefully to ourselves, because the selection of your unit will be the, the entire driving force of all your work in MAD during this year. So everything about what you're going to do in MAD will be converging into your design unit and into, therefore, the research topics of your unit. What 
uh, the first thing for in order to gain that extensive knowledge on your topic it's what is called the state of the art of your research topic therefore what has been studied what has been explored yet by previous authors theoretical authors or authors of uh, architecture uh, studying architecture and urban design references implies different resources. It implies journal articles, it implies books, so, but it implies as well architectural works themselves. Therefore, you're going to use architecture design and sometimes even urban design uh, published works, and uh, sometimes those published works are competitions, but sometimes they are built uh, buildings and built uh, public spaces as as resources of your research at the same equal level as journal papers or books or book chapters. Therefore, that would be what constitutes the first design research literature review. Then that would be the moment for you to realize which are the aspects that hasn't been covered, that hasn't been explored by these previous authors on your research topic. Well, that hasn't been explored yet by anyone else within your research topic. And this is what we call the research gap, the gap in knowledge, something that hasn't been explored yet. Therefore, first of all, let's study what has been studied and what has been covered by these previous authors before understanding which are the aspects that are not yet explored by anyone. In a way, it's a discovery, isn't it? And for a discovery, what it's important, here you have some of my hand-drawn sketches. Very important this year, hand-drawing and sketching all the time, and that's why I'm, uh, I'm uh, giving you the examples with those hand-drawn sketches. When we are talking about discoveries and when we are talking about exploring, in reality, we can make an analogy with the, the, the time where there was all these explorers discovering continents uh, in the past. 16th century, or a discovery of, uh, of America, of Australia, uh, whatever. There were, at that time, worldwide areas that were unknown, at least for the Western, for the Western world. And in the map, th those areas were blanks, were areas that were just named as unknown territories. Here, with the research, instead of a physical territory, what we have is a is an intellectual territory, is a territory of ideas. Therefore, the first thing that you're going to, we're going to do is to put in the very broad territory of ideas to set up a first frame, a first frame, which is the frame provided by your unit. That frame is the, the broader research topic of your unit. That is, uh, that is a setting uh, a frame in this broader territory of ideas that would be the area, the area of your exploration within each unit. Then the first thing that you're going to do is that second uh, diagram, which is about the literature review, which is about starting exploring the known territory of that, uh, of that area. Therefore, the previous authors, those points are authors that are located in different places. As I said, authors of built architecture, authors of built uh, urban, urban interventions, for example, authors of journal papers, and authors of books or book chapters. Where those authors are located within your frame, and you will discuss that question of location because it, it implies intellectual position. There are different opinions within your research topic, and what is the scope of their research? Therefore, how much they are covering in the research. Sometimes some of those authors are completely opposed. And sometimes there would be authors that are very closely connected and even with areas that are overlapping. This is something that you need to start mapping out, that you need to start mapping that territory of ideas with those authors, their location, and how much they are covering. And when they are overlapping and when there might be as well confronted in their ideas quite far away if you wish. Then it might result in this kind of diagram. At a certain moment, you will have 
all the different authors already studied and you would start being much more aware of uh, what is the known, the known uh, research, the known state of the art of your research topic, therefore what has been covered previously, and therefore you'd be at the position of starting hatching those intermediate regions that are the ones that are not covered by anyone else yet. And those hatched areas that are not covered by anyone else yet, therefore about your previous authors, are precisely what we call the research gaps. Those research gaps is the areas that you, you need first to identify what hasn't been explored by anyone. And therefore, what you're going to do here is to select the position be okay amongst these different design gaps and I will be then focusing this is a zoom in diagram to one of those research gaps which is this one and within that gap saying okay great now I know all those different authors and what they have uh, covered that area hasn't been already explored by anyone yet let's start asking questions to that unexplored territory and those questions that you're going to ask to this unknown unexplored territory is what we call the research questions questions that would be not asked to areas that were already covered by previous people but to the areas that are unknown and this is very important for the beginning of your research exploration. And then you would start figuring out which might be the final overall objective of your design research, therefore of your design projects for giving responses to those research questions that you're going to make on those areas. And this is what we call the design research aim which is not we are using the word aim and we are not using the word objective because aim is very similar to objective but in writing it implies a wider a wider and a coherent uh, objective that could embed different uh, partial objectives of your design research therefore that design research aim would be the final uh, the final destination, the final end of what you would like to explore in your design research. And therefore, that would be the final aim for providing answers, for providing answers to your design research questions. Therefore, in other words, to cover finally that uh, research uh, gap that you have identified here. Therefore, what you're going to do throughout the year is developing design research projects of contemporary architecture that are going to cover up an unknown territory of ideas. There's multiple links between design and research, but that is very important for you. Uh, they are there are three that, that might be the first ones that you need to be aware of. The first one being the classic one that we are always using uh, between design and research. That is the linear, the linear relationship between uh, the research and the design, which implies what I'm saying here. The research outcomes of something justifies a design decision. You make a research on something, you, you, you get some findings, and those findings would be the justification of your design decision. This is the basic level. And this is, of course, something that you're going to do, but that's a basic level. The second level is understanding your design as a laboratory. Therefore, a design laboratory implies that your design will be constantly revisited and, and revisited in different versions for testing the different ideas that you are getting 
from your study in the literature you use. Therefore, different, it's about making different design scenarios, spatial translations of ideas from your literature review are uh, explored using your design as a testbed, using your design as a laboratory of, of those ideas to see if those spatial translations of those ideas are working well or not within the particular area where you are intervening, within the particular context, therefore, where you are intervening, and how those different spatial translations are as well well articulated in coherence together or not. Therefore, throughout the year, you're going to constantly uh, revisit your design work. You're going to make many versions of the same design work that little by little will become more and more sophisticated by proceeding in such a way. This way of, of revisiting your design work in cycles and getting back to your, your research, testing, uh, concluding the, the things that are working well, the things that are not working well, and then for advancing and making a new uh, version is called an iterative process, iterative without an end. The interactions is the way that normally we are evolving in design. In design, we are not evolving in a linear manner, We're evolving by testing and making mistakes and making as well some findings for then revisit, revisit what we have done so far and then advancing in the a new version of our design project. And the third and more advanced level of your design research is once you have acquired a sufficient knowledge on your topic and once you have gained uh, uh, quite a good skills in using your design as a laboratory, you can start understanding when, in which cases, your design itself might constitute research. It implies that in which cases, by designing something, I'm directly, I'm directly exploring something that hasn't been explored yet. But for that, for reaching that level, you need to have uh, done all the previous step, steps and you, you need to be very confident in these first levels of linearity from research to design and the second level of design uh, laboratory. So you should be using design at all stages of your research exploration, including the literature review. At the stage of the literature review, you need to uh, use the design for translating into space the ideas that you are studying in your literature review and how those spatial translations could be applied to your specific intervention sites context. What we call the second row of drawings after, uh, uh, after translating into space, the applicability drawings. Now it's about confronting those spatial translations with your own context. How to translate spatially? the ideas that you're getting from the journals and books that you are studying. If part of your research review will be also architecture and urban design works, then obviously the idea and its translation is already there and just need to be studied and confronted to your own context. But the first question about how to translate especially the ideas that you're getting from a more theoretical literature review is something that you're going to practice with us. And this is something that you're going to practice in the units, and you're going to practice as well in analysis of precedent. You're going to know how to, how to translate ideas into space. Therefore, while you're studying your literature review references, you need as well to sketch simultaneously those spatial translations. That is what we call the spatial active reading by sketching. Therefore, now is not only about highlighting or taking notes while you are studying something, it's about sketching what would be the final spatial translations there. Sometimes is the, ideas, the ideas are very abstract or conceptual, organizational or, or systemic. It might be also uh, the case that uh, using diagrams that are more conceptual would be as well very clarifying to you. So, so it's not always the case of 
translating just into space, it might be about translating conceptual ideas into diagrams. And just to conclude here, those are some first references. You've got uh, those, uh, as you know, this uh, presentation in Learning Central, in all the, you know, and you can get into those first references. To start with, I think these two first, Murray Fraser book, Design Research in Architecture, and Jeremy Thiel's um, paper, which is a short one, three minutes and one model, that you can get directly uh, on the internet in PDF, uh, would be very important. So probably uh, because of its immediacy, Jeremy Thiel's one, after our explanation today, would apply very much. And then that book of design research in architecture would be very good. Then you have the other references that might be as well very important for you. Start getting familiarized with what is design research because this is what you're going to do for the entire year. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Stop sharing. Okay, now we're going to proceed directly with Marie. Okay. With okay, her I own get... individual approach. Thank you very much. Uh, I will share my screen. And actually, I, I asked Mamuna Iqbal, teaching assistant, uh, to first start a little bit with the introduction why is that important what i will be talking about uh, and that is her phd research uh, within uh, within uh, within uh, design uh, design research pedagogy so we will be talking about uh, empathy as a methodology and why is that important to relate to each other di discussing collaborative design uh, hello everyone so as you are already uh, familiar with me, I'm Memuna Iqbal. I'm working as teaching assistant with uh, with uh, with MAD program from for third year now. But meanwhile, I'm also pursuing my PhD. I'm also uh, I'm actually a PhD student in uh, our School of Architecture, and my PhD is actually about uh, how social backgrounds impact different social background impact students' learning approaches and learning experience in architectural education. And uh, though this research is now directly uh, relevant to the design research that you are going to conduct in ADR, but it is very, it can be very interesting for you to see how uh, research is being uh, practiced in overall scenario of architecture and architectural education. And also, it sets a ground for what, uh, as Marie said, uh, it sets a ground of why empathy is important in design research and um, in the practice of teaching uh, in design. So. The aim of the of my PhD is uh, to understand. Sorry, uh, oh, sorry, keep, sorry. I will tell you when when to go, go, go forward. Okay, thank you, Mary. So the aim of my PhD is to understand uh, the impact of social background on a students' learning approaches. And as uh, Federico was talking about doing literature review, I did a very extensive literature review, and I got to understand that uh, students' life history, social diversity, their cultural diversity, and this is something that you will be working with as well, social and cultural diversity, very much in your units. So I got to know that uh, how these, uh, these factors impact their uh, personality dispositions, and there's a terminology habitus for that. And then that habitus, uh, uh, impact the future actions. So it is very important to understand for uh, design school uh, to uh, how um, a student's life history is impacting their personality and how it can impact their learning experiences and approaches in the schools of architecture. Amari, um, can you go now? Yeah. Thank you. So that is why I conducted a research on how different schools are practicing uh, empathy in their pedagogy which is something that Marie will be talking about next. And then I got to know, I, I, this, is, this is a very, very short overview, but uh, my actual uh, uh, work is very, very extensive. But uh, just to give you a glimpse, is that I divided the schools into four groups actually, but I'm talking about two groups here. Uh, and the study is conducted in actually in Pakistan, in 40 architecture schools in Pakistan. But I, uh, I got to know that schools that are focused on personal grooming, exposure, diversity, tomorrow's vision, social responsibility, they are creating a more 
uh, learning uh, more uh, including learning environment for students from all habituses. And the schools who are uh, uh, focused on uh, course content and completing tasks and problem solving and top down guidance approach, they are not creating a very positive learning environment for the for, for students coming from the social backgrounds. And as you can see, these are the three aspects that I uh, that I am showing here. There are a lot more in my PhD, but in here we can see that students' responses in in schools. Are different for these three aspects, and these are schools. Is uh, school is a con uh, conducive environment for new ideas. So in school uh, group A, mostly students agree with this statement, and in school group B, they did not. And then critiques are respectful and constructive, and instructor accept diverse thinking. So these are the three aspects that show the most diverse range of responses from students from different habitus groups. So that is why I make. A case here that empathy, practicing empathy in design methodology is very, very important uh, while, while we are teaching students coming from different social backgrounds. And now uh, Marie will talk about how she is an, uh, practicing empathy or how in general we are practicing empathy in MAAD program. Okay, in thank you Mura, very much. Thank you. So I will, I will start with something uh, Something from last year, which uh, which was our study trip in Prague, and this year we don't know whether we will go on study trip at the, the end or not. But uh, uh, this year we will be doing mapping on our direct location, actually once a, once a week, and you will be experiencing this exercise. This exercise was uh, actually designed by my Prague colleague, landscape ecologist, uh, who I asked to make a workshop for my students. And uh, discussion was, uh, uh, the task for the students was to get from the point uh, A to the, to the point B, but uh, not as a human being, but they were asked to actually empathize with uh, uh, certain species of their choice, obviously not the one that is flying, that will be too easy, but they had to emp empathize with, uh, with uh, some species and get uh, through the bio corridors within the city from the point A to point B. I mean, it is, uh, you, you see, see the green spots, but some, some places you have wall, uh, which certain species cannot uh, pass through. Some, uh, some places are uh, uh, too, uh, too, there is too much traffic or, so they had to register every barrier they met on their way and try to find the way how to, how to get there. So by, by doing this, uh, the students generated empathy. How is it uh, to uh, live together with, uh, with different abilities uh, uh, within the city? And uh, what is my unit specializing is actually really about co-living with other, other species. But uh, it can be also, there is a discussion of co-living with other people, uh, which are also, also species uh, on itself. So discussing uh, discussing different different skills abilities and uh, feeling empathy for different uh, kind of uh, understandings uh, amongst each other, which uh, goes to that uh, what uh, uh, what uh, I always ask uh, whoever I design this to draw a mini map, a mini map of their own universe within uh, within uh, within the brief. So uh, so they map their universe. What are their interests? What would be their aims? Uh, what would they want to develop? They actually, uh, before you start co-designing with other people, you have to understand also what, uh, what, uh, what do you want? And then by understanding what do you want, you start understanding uh, that other people have their own universes. And that's where we get to giga mapping uh, when we do co-design or collaborative design. Uh, across uh, different discipline stakeholders or just across the students and they start relating their universes and starting searching for synergetic uh, proposals what uh, what uh, my work specializes is actually uh, to work with real life co-design laboratory which means that uh, we make uh, the prototypical intervention into real life environment and observe them and that there comes the part of reflection 
And that reflection often leads to redesign because you start understanding that things work different than uh, you thought when, uh, when you were designing. So redesign is uh, the most important part of uh, design where you adapt uh, your sort of ideal proposal to the real life environment. Of course, this diagram seems to be linear. So no, this, uh, this goes in, uh, in a feedback loop. So then uh, after reflection, you start uh, mini-mapping, giga-mapping, and again, full-scale prototyping, reflecting again, all, all informed in uh, feedback loops. So this, uh, this would be example of a giga-map of the student uh, that was actually asked to synergize different mini-maps uh, Across, uh, across the team, you see the relations. And uh, he also had to interpret the relations. So it is not about just drawing an arrow between different things, but you need to understand how different universes relate to each other to search for synergy. This would be, this would be workshop actually done through my practice when uh, people, people are drawing, uh, drawing on the table their, their own minimaps. And then uh, this is an example when, uh, when the students start relating their minimaps across the table to find, uh, find synergetic solution. This would be example with, uh, with students from MAD where we tried a little bit different methodology where uh, everybody had to cut the minimap, their minimap, and they had to organize together synergetic solutions across, across different minimaps uh, to group them into topics and start finding relationships uh, across that. That works quite well. So they were, they were organizing uh, their, own, uh, their own ideas uh, into synergetic ideas across the team. And then uh, uh, finding the relationships between, uh, between uh, the different, uh, different uh, uh, universes. This is then a co-design workshop already in Grangetown when, uh, when you start actually integrating local community and uh, you start asking what are the universities of the, of the people who live on site or different experts, like this is the landscape architect uh, who has been designing for the site. Uh, uh, we invite ecologists, we invite different, uh, different experts uh, uh, doing uh, something called transdisciplinary design, but also co-designing with the community. The point is that the community uh, knows, uh, knows the area much better than whoever else because they live there every day. And they also can express their ideas, what, uh, how would they want their development. And uh, based on that, you redesign your proposals. So it is actually adapted to the real life environment. This is, uh, this is another co-design workshop already working with prototypes. Uh, uh, when you have tangible objects, uh, uh, the, you, you see this, uh, this kid is very excited about this uh, student's uh, students' design of the joint, you, you discuss the tangible objects, people enact those objects and start to understand and start uh, suggesting uh, different proposals and uh, different, uh, different redesigns or start co-designing uh, the proposal. This is, uh, this is uh, an example of the enactment, right? When you put uh, the prototype into real life environment, uh, this, uh, this dancer actually shows you how to and that, uh, enact uh, that, uh, that object you place into the environment and you see the interaction. Uh, so different, uh, different uh, sort of uh, users or communities bring their opportunistic use of what you've done and they actually co-design and redesign your intervention and through actually seeing the inter intervention in real life, you start understanding uh, uh, but uh, you start understanding your intervention and you regain new interpretations of, uh, of your intervention. When you see this dancer, I mean, I wouldn't explain this by word, but uh, you perfectly get the feeling how, how is the interaction of uh, different, uh, different uh, uh, gender of, of that, uh, that person within, uh, within uh, that tangible object of the wooden pavilion. And of course, we, we redesigned this, uh, with other species, when this uh, this black bird actually decided that it is perfect uh, street urban furniture for uh, for birds, because and it sounds sounds sort of funny, but it is actually serious uh, discussion because people tend to 
design uh, the cities so the other species actually the birds cannot sit on the windows they put spikes things like this so those birds then don't have a place where to sit in the city and die by exhaustion so the city furniture for for a black bird is actually very important intervention for urban life across the species this is uh, this is uh, this is uh, co-designing with these kids we were building this structure while these kids already started playing on it and telling us uh, where exactly we should put the lock uh, because uh, how is it the, the most playful playful for them and uh, how they want us to do that this would be this would be generating uh, generating empathy you know through uh, this this is my colleague landscape ecologist uh, uh, teaching this kid uh, how to make seed bombing for blooming uh, blooming uh, plants uh, where pollinators uh, can get uh, can get honey and uh, this kid has empathy because she just explained to him that butterflies needs uh, needs uh, needs uh, to eat in the city and this mother has generated empathy because she maybe wouldn't care about the butterfly at all, but she cares about her kid. And because she cares that her kids care, then you generate generative empathy across across the community because uh, because it's a uh, non, uh, non not just linear process. Co-designing with uh, with local kids, these kids we just build the basic structures, and these kids were placing. Uh, onions of uh, early blooming plants for the for the uh, pollinators to to get honey in early spring it was oriented towards uh, towards uh, the south so it was the early species in in the spring and these kids took completely care of it and by actually by actually giving them its its local scouts by asking them to do that you generate their empathy with uh, with uh, with the pollinators because they get to understand that uh, the pollinators need to eat something in urban environment where there is uh, not so much uh, so much food for for other species and uh, these kids took completely over and they were designing their own their own uh, bad food over the winter before before the spring came and this is something uh, you are not a master designer anymore you are co-designing with local communities and uh, uh, you have mul multiple authorship for the communities to live together and understand the uh, generated through empathy what we work with uh, is actually we put uh, put qr codes on those prototypes we engrave the qr codes and uh, if you get to the qr code uh, you get to website where you have a recipe for DIY do it yourself where people so this design is generative you explain why is this project important and people can actually reproduce uh, your design themselves uh, in their front and back gardens or wherever communities can uh, do that together uh, again uh, when we did this project last year uh, here I will just uh, get to that block now uh and uh, just to show you uh diy competition for the local school by the school students designs uh, where where uh, kids during lockdown didn't really have uh, much to do so they were engaged in uh, reproducing those uh, interventions in their front and back gardens uh, where uh, there are uh, there are the DIY recipes by each student's uh, intervention with uh, this QR code everybody is asked to upload their uh, their QR code uh, so this design is generative you see something in neighbor's garden you see, see it's nice you scan the QR code and start uh, start reproducing uh, reproducing because you want it as well what was uh, what was actually again uh, engagement with empathy was uh, our students Danjan Wang uh, actually generated an app uh, and I will I will get to that app uh, uh, where you have a Google map over uh, over the neighborhood and uh, people people place uh, place their uh, put a picture of their of their intervention uh, on uh, and I cannot uh, zoom into that uh, here yeah 
uh, people people pl place their intervention uh, into the map and you see my name they generate together bio corridors it, so it's becoming sort of urban game by uh, by generating empathy across the neighbors and uh, you see okay well my neighbor made uh, made uh, and i am missing on the map to generate a bio corridor so in fact i have to do this intervention uh, as well uh, so i will get uh, get back to the presentation so just to just to conclude uh, analyzing and understanding yourself your own is interest your own universe is uh, the minimap where you need to understand what you want to, to understand uh, that other people uh, have their own universes as well which means you have to really think amongst each other's uh, the other universes to generate empathy that is what we call giga mapping that's the big map across uh, different people and that generates empathy understanding and enacting which means synergetic design uh, this has to be confronted with real life and that generates empathy with the real life environment through reflection and redesign so thank you if you are interested in publications in the field please uh, scan uh, scan our qr codes uh, <laughs> and uh, thank you for for listening thank you very much uh, marie for this uh, very interesting presentation uh, so now we are going to proceed very briefly uh, by showing you because we'd like to allow yourselves as well to ask us uh, some questions by the end of this session but uh, very briefly we're going to show you some examples of the work done in, uh, in, in here regards to what we are covering up today as a, something introductory about design in my in my unit i am going to well my unit is about interculturality and contemporary architecture you're going to see you're going to discover that uh, next monday but basically what i was very keen on here is on showing you an, a very general overview of the of the internal structure of the dissertation something that is very important for us and for everyone in MAB is the methodology, is the how you are conducting your work, you're conducting your design research work. So right from the beginning, this student uh, was uh, very well trained on explaining not only the what, what he would like to pursue, how, uh, what he would like to, to advance in knowledge, the new things that he would like to cover up, but as well how he's going to do that. And that, that is about the introduction with the help of diagrams. Then, uh, one aspect that is very important, guys, for everyone to understand how uh, contemporary architecture operates is that the development of your design research projects are always in the interactions between two levels. The contextual level, where you are intervening, and the conceptual level which is the territory precisely of the ideas that you are going to explore, very much related to my previous explanation. What, are the, what is the knowledge that you're going to explore further, grounded on the previous knowledge that you have acquired with the help of the development of your research review and the case study analysis. Here, this student started, this student started with a contextual analysis of, the, of his uh, intervention site. We were operating last year in, in Sicily, in the capital city of Sicily. If you, if for the ones that uh, don't, don't know where it is, is the, is in the southernmost of uh, of Italy, the the big island at the at the south of Italy, that region, Sicily, just in the middle of Mediterranean, and is a gateway, one of the most important gateways for the uh, for the migration coming from Africa and from other uh, parts of Asia, Syria, and even further that are crossing the Mediterranean and arriving to that place. So that place, Sicily and its capital, Palermo, where we have operated, is very important in terms of migration. And that's why, as my unit is about contemporary architecture in regards to migration and in regards to interculturality, the mutual interaction between an understanding and respect between different cultures, that was very important. Here, what you can see, 
is the contextual analysis. That contextual analysis operates at multiple scales, from the urban to the public space and to the architectural scales. And the contextual analysis is made out of the built fabric, what is built, but as well, as well the social fabric. Therefore, the people and their mutual interaction. All the time, understanding a context is understanding the built environment and the people with their mutual understanding. Here, that work, as you can see, I don't want to, of course, I'm not going to give you details on that at that stage. I will do so in my unit. It's a very sophisticated analysis on the multiple relationships at all those different three scales, urban, public space, and architectural scales of the people doing things in their building environment and slowly arriving to his intervention site, which is this complex within the historical city center of uh, Palermo with many interesting heritage values. And on top of those heritage values in that complex, uh, there was a contemporary, 21st contemporary intervention. Uh, there was in that context analysis as the result of that uh, of that uh, context analysis there was a diagnose diagnose is all the aspects that are very positive the aspects that are potentially positive but not completely developed and the ones that are uh, that are not that are not well addressed that are degrading factors if you wish and therefore uh, from the diagnose comes the first proposition and this uh, for example is related to first proposition in regards to programs and in regards to public spaces and in regards to the people's interactions between themselves. As you can see here, there's a very developed program. Here, what is interesting for you in that first introductory overlook is the literature review. This student follow, followed on on the territory of ideas for structuring all his literature review, the different ideas that he needed to cover uh, for his literature review on interculturality and contemporary architecture by setting up very relevant parameters, therefore themes, if you wish, uh, on, on his uh, own mapping and then by analyzing the different, the different uh, resources, the different journals, books, and attribute works where those different resources were located within his own mapping. And then finally, identifying what I have uh, introduced earlier on about his own research gap. So that is the research gap that he has found. And then the zoom in of that research gap resulted in this very, very curious uh, shape where he explained the different topics that were uh, that were articulating this research gap. And therefore, uh, he was able at that stage to start questioning that research gap. And then there was a second revision of that contextual analysis after having gaining knowledge on his literature review. Therefore, constantly revisiting while you are becoming more knowledgeable, uh, you are no, knowing more about your topic, you can revisit again what you have explored initially. And that revisit of the, of the context was far more, far more sophisticated than the previous one. And then uh, there was a conclusion of the, of the literature review and of the contextual analysis at that stage about which are the aspects that were already covered, but as well, which are other aspects that are not yet covered by anyone and by uh, all the work done so far. And that would be the grounds for the next step, which is the case the study analysis. Case study analysis is using other examples that might be relevant from other cities or places that might be uh, comparable to yours for advancing in knowledge as well. Therefore, the selection criteria of those case studies were grounded in what was not, not already, already explored, explored by the previous stage of the research. And then case study analysis here, quite a complex one. And then all those findings, how all those different findings 
are converging in different ways in a very structured manner to the design uh, research contemporary intervention of that historical context, which is a convent and now uh, converted into a social service provided for the community. And all the different programs, design decisions, ways of uh, organizing the space, the relationship between the heritage and the new uh, contemporary interventions were absolutely grounded in all that research that has been developed and been hand simultaneously and not in a linear way with this design research. I'll stop, I'll stop here because uh, I'd like to, to, to have these final minutes. Uh, Marie, probably, probably in your presentation I've already covered part of, uh, of examples, but would you like to to spend a couple of minutes, if you wish, for for giving some other the unit session, as as you prefer. I I, I thought I would present a very fast uh, one uh, one of uh, one of, of uh, our portfolios, uh, and yeah. uh, then then we take questions. Is that okay? That's absolutely fine, of course. Okay, good. So I will I will be very fast because I am aware of uh, of of the time. Uh, so I will just uh, show uh, show you very fast this beautiful. In any, case, in any case, as we have started, just just to add on, as we have started at ten at six past past ten, we always have these six minutes more for that. Okay. Unit. So don't don't worry because of course, uh, yeah, we need it just to get the, the students mm -hmm. into the into the session. There are even surprisingly others that are that are arriving now late. Arriving late is not a great thing, guys. So it's very important to, to be very punctual about all what we're doing. Okay, Marie. Okay. You? So this is a, this is a presentation by Yu Chen Wang. Well, this is portfolio by Yu Chen Wang. And it's called uh, Regenerative Community Relations, uh, the systemic design via blockchain. What I maybe didn't mention is that the, the uh, ma major methodology with I am working with is systemic design uh, and students have different responsibilities within those teams when we are relating empathy based on their minimaps and their interests. This student was interested in, uh, in blockchain. So uh, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is of course uh, the the, uh, the structure of the thesis where the students uh, are developing two topics. One is their responsibility within the team because we do synergetic, uh, synergetic project across the whole unit. And uh, the second part is their own uh, intervention, which has to relate to all the other responsibilities as well as to all the other prototypes of the other, other students. Uh, so just getting there, uh, the student, uh, the student has been uh, is introducing the knowledge what is what it is blockchain that it is the new economy of 21st century and how it can integrate other species and uh, how it can integrate flourishing communities based on that that blockchain economy is not based on bank, uh, which means uh, democratizing uh, new economic models. This is uh, this is explaining this is uh, his gigamap gigamap of. Uh, uh, integration of blockchain into our synergetic project and this is a gigamap of his uh, of his uh, intervention uh, here 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 is he is mapping uh, different steps and field he has been he has been taken and discussing uh, explaining uh, doing literature review on what is uh, what is blockchain and how it is uh, performed this is uh, this is literature review map uh, where he is actually integrating uh, all the topics that have been found and analyzing the research gaps, which are the spaces in between, ex exactly like Federico said uh, in his presentation. And this is, uh, this is uh, explaining uh, the different fields uh, going from one, one to another, and then he is uh, synergizing, uh, synergizing uh, this, uh, this review explaining uh, what he has found uh, and so on so on and uh, actually uh, analyzing uh, analyzing the relationships between uh, the different fields he has been 
he has been relating, uh, drawing, uh, drawing different uh, scenarios. Oh no, this, this is not different scenarios. This is scenario from, from uh, his precedent. Uh, he has been analyzing and this is another of his precedent. So one, one precedent was about uh, blockchain from the book Artistry Thinking Blockchain. And the other precedent was from living architecture, which was, uh, which was applied to his prototype. So it was, uh, uh, his prototype is uh, about, about uh, multi-species growing, uh, uh, growing um, uh, structure together that uh, integrates habitats for, for other species. Uh, this would be his, uh, his uh, city analysis to understand the systemic relations of the city. And uh, here, here we, we get to like uh, co-designing, how his design developed through the co-design workshops across the unit and across the community. And uh, explaining, explaining his, uh, his uh, prototypical interventions. I mean, this year due to COVID, we couldn't really intervene in uh, real life. Uh, uh, build the structures. So what we did, we focused on interaction design and uh, engaged with uh, social media, got people to reproduce uh, the, our prototypes themselves instead of uh, us building them. So this is, uh, this is explaining, but you have to build the prototype to understand how to build it and explain how to build it. So uh, he has been uh, developing, uh, developing the prototype on how to build it. This is a uh, giga mapping uh, across uh, the unit where uh, the students responsible for materials, uh, where did the deep analysis, what are the natural materials uh, the city can, the people can collect themselves. Uh, so they don't need uh, initial investors uh, when uh, when they want to reproduce the prototypes and she was uh, she was updating the designs of the prototypes of each uh, each member explaining them uh, how they could do that so he, here he developed the prototypes which is partly growing structure and partly uh, non living structure where you where you have different units and you are placing the units into the into the living structure to generate the habitat multi species habitats and this is the analysis how this system can reproduce across the city to generate cities bio corridors and connect the different relationships of uh, green spaces within uh, within the city again again scenarios integration into into actually the the blockchain uh, blockchain uh, uh, system and how it can be uh, developed into cir circular economy and scenarios of uh, what happens when the people meet the prototype, uh, how they start analyzing, what is the interaction design, be, uh, getting people curious and wanting to, wanting to generate that. Uh, and then generating how uh, the scenario on how the system integrates uh, small local businesses, uh, how it integrates, for instance, butterfly that you pay it for pollinating your garden and how you simplify actually blockchain system for people who uh, don't uh, don't are very uh, digitally knowledgeable how you make it accessible so so they they are able to able to interact with uh, such a system because because many people are not having knowledge about digital technologies this would, this would be the scenarios of, on how those things uh, are done together with the combination of uh, real, real life interaction with the community and actually getting those uh, systems running. So these are his, uh, his two giga maps with the re site relation uh, relating all the prototypes within, uh, within the unit and the scenarios how those prototypes relate and how they relate into the, into the new economic model. And this would be his conclusion, where he actually reflected over his design process and learning process and uh, how, those, uh, how those processes were in feedback loop. So he, he also reflects on what, what, what was the learning curve. Of course, uh, literature, that is very important. Uh, and you will get uh, some basics from us, but you have to search for your own. So that's uh, that's uh, that's it from uh, from from Yuchen's presentation. We are okay, happy to you. take some thank questions. Thank you very much, uh, Maria. I see that it was uh, it illustrates 
okay, it illustrates very, very well, very well your own design research uh, methods. As you have seen, uh, guys, what is very important is that there is um, a general, a general understanding of design research and a general approach that we have, we are sharing in MAD, and this is what we, we are going to train you for becoming complex, as I said the other day, uh, complex uh, and sophisticated uh, design thinkers. But as well, what is very interesting is that we have that diversity of our different approaches within the different units. Therefore, there would be always common uh, knowledge and then a specific knowledge that you're going to acquire, knowledge and methodology that you're going to acquire within each of the units. Okay, uh, now we are going to, if it's okay for you, Marie, uh, that uh, would it be fine for you to uh, have uh, for all of us uh, five minutes of questions from the students and then proceed with your answer present uh, in, uh, introduction at, at 10. 10 yeah, past. sounds, great. sounds great. great. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, guys, therefore, I'm sure that now that stage between the, uh, this week where you are, uh, where you are in the process of familiarizing yourself with a huge amount of information, and now you slowly, you are starting uh, getting uh, more and more information about our course. I'm sure that you are starting having some, some, some questions probably about what we have uh, explored so far. So uh, we, can, we can have those final minutes uh, for you if you'd like to ask us some questions about design research methods so far. You can just okay. unmute yourself and start talking or place the question in yeah. the uh, Depends what you prefer or there is one already. There's one, perfect. A question from Kai Huan. Thank you very much. So the first question is what can can uh, we do let you know each student's speciality when and how will be divided into groups? Well, this is a, a question that is not related to design research, as I said, but basically it's what we have, uh, we have uh, introduced you guys, that next Monday is the first teaching day. So next Monday will be the start of week one. And next Monday at 10, we're going to have the uh, the introduction as it is um, as it is described in my timetable activities and as well you've got that information in learning central and as well in the weekly module maps so you can access to uh, all those teaching activities from different sources you are going to have on that first session the introduction of our different units marie marie's unit my unit and Giorgio Palozzi's, uh, Palozzi's unit, who unfortunately is teaching in, uh, in, uh, as well in UCL and at the Architectural Association and couldn't join us uh, today, but he will be delivering his presentation on Monday. And therefore, after listening very carefully to those presentations, you will uh, well have the possibility of, of asking us questions and, and uh, discussing with us the different uh, the different units and then you will vote for your preferred unit. I will, you know, at the end of this, uh, this, uh, this session, I will uh, uh, go through the, the program just very briefly. Second question is, I think uh, interacting with your you tutors and others is very important, but I don't know how to do this online. Should we do some drawings like mini maps and interacting groups on our following study? Uh, well, in reality, yes, in reality, yes, you're going to have what you're going to have is uh, your own seminar groups with uh, uh, all of us. So after having selected each of the units, you're going to be organized within those units. That would be, uh, we hope, of a maximum of nine students per, per unit leader. And within each of the units, you're going to have seminars, seminars, like the ones that we can deliver in, in studio normally, that would be online for now because of the conditions of the, of the pandemic. Uh, and as well, uh, at certain moments, you will have as well one-to-one -one tutorials. Additionally from that, after, the, after this, as you know, from, uh, from Friday onwards, we're going to have the, the, fire, the fire break uh, 
period of two weeks. After that, we're going to develop as well complementary teaching activities that would be as well face-to-face -face in the form of site visits and different shared activities between ourselves that would be face-to-face -face and always uh, complying with the health uh, regulations in terms of social distancing, mass, cover mass covers, etc. We'll cover all that, so don't worry. If, if I can just uh, quickly respond, I'm not sure whether the question was, uh, was also about collaborative drawing together. There are online platforms. So for, for the co-designing activities and uh, designing across the unit, we will use a platform called Miro to which I will send you invitation. I have the educator's license and you will be, you will be minimaps you can do in Illustrator or whatever graphic program you prefer. You can also work in Miro on your own minimap, but for the collaborative platform, it's, uh, it's very easy. So many students actually, when we switched uh, from, uh, from uh, physical, physical co-designing to actually doing those, uh, those activities online, um, majority of the students actually preferred that, uh, found it uh, more useful that they can relate on. It's like a graphical diagramming platform for people drawing, uh, drawing together. It's quite fun. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, more questions in design research methods on and about. Are you are you understanding what is design research? Is there anyone who would like to ask any question about the the very meaning of design research? It seems that everyone is, uh, is reflecting very much and is trying to digest all this first uh, information I gave, uh, we, we just gave you guys, which is absolutely normal. So feel free. I think that now, during this week, isn't it, is about revisiting the, you know, all that uh, different uh, presentations that we deliver to you. This session today is a very important one because it's set in the grounds of the way that you're going to learn across the entire year and we're going to refer back many times to those uh, initial introductory presentations for you to understand how you need to proceed how you need to work therefore your working methodology therefore please uh, our advice would be to revisit many times the different presentations that now we are uh, you have there available in learning central on top of that of course, uh, now you need to go into the different uh, uh, asynchronous uh, resources that are, that are uh, provided by the university to familiarize yourself with all those different resources that you need to, that you need to be very uh, fluent with. Okay, that week is very important for that. Alongside to it, after having selected the optional modules, you're going to be contacted uh, by the different, your different optional module leaders for uh, some introductory activities. So I am aware that, for example, Marga, Marga Munar from Issues in Contemporary Architecture uh, would like to give you an introduction uh, for the ones that have selected, of course, this module on Friday at 12. So you are going to be the ones that have selected that optional module will be contacted by her. And, and probably as well, you're going to be contacted by other optional modules for these complementary territory activities. Okay, uh, just, uh, just to conclude that session and, and leave in the, uh, well, the textbooks, we have, just a, we have just a question from Nancy. Uh, if uh, the textbooks in reality is all those uh, different uh, resources that you need to explore, on your own that of course starting from the references that we are giving you there is the general references as the ones that i provided at the end of my presentation and there will be obviously the units references in learning central now if you go to learning central to our architecture design research module the code is art701 you're going to find in learning in the option in the left hand side menu 
learning materials, you're going to find the different units. And in those units, if you click into this, the folder of each unit, you're going to see the briefs. And that is very important, guys, to explore those briefs before our session on Monday. And at the end of the briefs, you're going to find the references, the first essential references that you need to cover. Those are the first ones that you need to study. And then uh, on top of those, you're going to develop your own explorations, guided, obviously, by ourselves. Okay, uh, let me just, uh, for, not, uh, for not examining ourselves too much, I'm just going to give you a very quick overlook of our session. Of our Monday session. As you know, next Monday, we're going to start at 10. Uh, and from 10 to 10.30, we're going to have the unit leaders, ourselves, presenting three units uh, in a short uh, 10 minutes presentation for each. Okay, on this follow, fo uh, following uh, Zoom link that you have as well in your one hour for Q&A session with all, uh, all of you guys. So you are going to, uh, you're going to uh, have the possibility during one hour of asking us questions about the different units. And uh, from then on, and uh, for this Q&A session, we're going to make uh, breakout sessions. It means that we're going to have uh, parallel sessions for each unit leader, where you're going to get there uh, to each of those uh, sessions for, uh, for asking us those relevant questions to our units. Then from 11.30 to 1, we're going to uh, have a first, uh, a first uh, space for touring you towards our MAD space within the WSA uh, exhibition that we have, uh, that the online exhibition that we organized uh, past July, where you can find all the, all the different uh, final projects from our units. That would be a very important reference for you as well. So uh, you can type as well WSA, uh, it's WSA on display, but you need to Google and you're going to find the exhibition. So beforehand, that would be very good to go to the exhibition to find where is MAD and to see the different units and the different, uh, the different units uh, work. Then we're going to have uh, the lunch break. And within that time, from 11.30 onwards and during the lunch break, you're going to finalize your uh, voting. On Monday, at the beginning of the, of the day, we're going to, Mamuna is going to uh, show you as well the online form, the online Google form where you are that you're going to use for opting for each of the units. Once your unit will be uh, allocated and uh, for that, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the best space would be from 11.30 to 1, uh, you are going to be allocated to each of those units uh, during the, the lunch break. Remember that we're going to ask you for the first uh, set, for the first choice, a second choice, and even a third choice, just in case. Normally, you're going to always get either the first, which would be obviously the, ref the preference, or the second, or the second one. Then, once you are going to be allocated to each of the units, you are going to uh, you're going to have your first teaching session with your unit leader from two to four, where each unit leader will explain, where will give an introduction to the brief, and will set up as well the homeworks, so the, the different the homework that you need to do for the following week. That would be the moment of starting the real teaching for each of the units. Okay, so that that is the that is pretty much. The introduction for what we're going to do on Monday, and uh, and now uh, Marie Davidova will proceed in delivering her introduction to ICS of President. Thank you very much, you. Ma uh, Marie, and uh, I'll leave uh, you the, the floor. Okay, thank you, Federico. Okay, I have to get some, this presentation into 
into other presentation. Uh, here we are. So first, uh, uh, first at first, I will uh, give you a bit introduction about uh, about uh, what does it mean to analyze the precedent and why it is important, and then I will take you through two portfolios, uh, two, two best portfolios submitted uh, submitted by our students, uh, just to give you an overview how uh, how this uh, will look. And just to, uh, I know many of you communicate with our this year's uh, students. Uh, uh, we have uh, certain changes here. And the changes uh, we believe are very positive because this time you will be analyzing precedents that are directly related to your unit. That was not exactly the case uh, uh, last year. So we, we have some improvements, which I believe is very positive and it will make more sense this year. So just to give you, you can use different tools for analyzing things. So for instance, this is anemometer to uh, measure wind speed. This is, uh, you already know, right? It measures temperature and relative humidity. This is moisture met met meter. You just stick, uh, stick in the needles into wood and uh, uh, through electricity, you find out what is the moisture within, uh, within that wood. But that's examples I just use for certain of my research. Uh, and uh, you, can, uh, you can use whatever you want. Uh, some devices we have at school and uh, we will try to organize uh, whether whether they will lend them to us uh, within uh, within the coronavirus situation at the at the moment we won't get to school probably this is just an example from another of my project when i had a microphone i had radio scanner camera and video camera and i was analyzing the recordings uh, with different softwares uh, building them into 3d spaces analyzing the images and analyzing the relationships, diagramming, uh, diagramming uh, different uh, different registered uh, material, and uh, drawing drawing some conclusions. Uh, what you will be doing uh, in uh, in uh, this uh, this um, uh, module is uh, will be gigamapping. Uh, I have, you've already seen some brief introduction about gigamapping. You will be working collaboratively. But again, having your expertise within the areas, which will be mainly based on your interests. So gigamaps can involve mind mapping, uh, conjure loop model, information visualization, service blueprint, diagramming, scenarios, user journey, collage, retrieve, also timelines. Uh, you can be very creative and you can combine many, many of the uh, diagramming strategies. The most important is that it consists of items and relations and you interpret the relations, understand what is the relation. So it means that uh, you don't just draw an arrow, but you have interpretation about that relation. Uh, what, uh, now I will show you some example how I, I did my research uh, through actually analyzing precedents. So this was design speculation. That was a competition entry by my practice, where actually the task was to generate gallery space that doesn't take uh, energy but uh, has a stable stable climate and i've read heard about concept of responsive wood and wanted to apply uh, apply responsive wood concept but my colleague said uh, you know make uh, make three years research on responsive wood and then we can apply it to practice so so i did i did my phd in responsive wood so uh, this is uh, this is uh, just start of the mapping mapping different of my projects and uh, mapping openingness and closeness and interactions within different agents within within those projects uh, drawing this gigamap of feedback loops between uh, different agents if i go closer so you you see you have light light, re light response sound response radio wave uh, responsive uh, relative humidity uh, social interaction, uh, uh, similar uh, diff different agents doing different uh, different actions uh, within uh, within these architectural pieces. So I got to understand. I actually analyzed my own designs to get to understand what I'm up to. And this is the responsive screen. I designed the responsive wood responsive screen that this uh, this wood warps and it makes whole. 
uh, in the in the screen so the air flow can flow through when uh, when you get the, the climate you want and uh, the the screen is when you have too high relative humidity and too low temperature uh, so to design that i had to uh, gigamap uh, certain analysis i analyzes i analyzed what the wood is actually good to use in terms of sustainability, what is good for the ecosystem, what is good wood to grow, what are the material properties of those of that wood that is good to grow in certain location, what, uh, what is the re relative humidity of the location, what are the general wood properties, and uh, then also interaction with, uh, with algae, uh, which uh, I just explained you. What I discovered is actually if you grow algae on wood, uh, uh, it has lower moisture content uh, than if you don't don't uh, grow it, which means that uh, this wood warps more when it's dry and uh, warm weather, whilst it is uh, not warping the other direction when it when the relative humidity is high. So that came, of course, from precedent speculation. I didn't uh, didn't start growing uh, growing uh, algae on uh, that uh, just uh, out of uh, complete speculation. I had this speculation from the fence, which was overgrown by algae and measured its moisture content. So it seemed that I was right, and then I started analyzing it on, on uh, design. So what is this uh, this uh, screen doing? It is it is uh, airing. This is when it airs when it's half open. This is uh, this part is when it's air when, when it's uh, when it's uh, fully open. And what I again analyzed what are the properties of breathing walls. So I analyzed through different study journeys. I analyzed the different examples uh, of breathing walls. And uh, the argumentation here is that I was actually analyzing breathing walls from more extreme climates because today we are receiving extreme climate extremes in Central European uh, regions. So I mapped the different, uh, different examples uh, and mapped their properties and mapped where they are and how, how actually what is the climate uh, zone and how what are the climatic changes and what is the migration of human beings and what are, what are the migrations of other species i'm sure all of you are aware that uh, uh, species uh, are migrating from the equator uh, because uh, having uh, di finding different locations because the climate climate became unbearable in the, in their origins so they move uh, they find uh, new habitats so this would be cohabitation with pigeons from uh, Cappadocia, where I mapped uh, mapped different properties, right? So there is like uh, what what does it do to climate comfort, cooling, warming, humidifying, drying, uh, different uh, climatic relations uh, together with uh, with uh, what is it uh, kind what is the kind of space, whether it's semi interior. Uh, architectural space or semi interior urban design space, uh, orientation towards public space, privacy, whilst the uh, public space overview, uh, then the social interaction, cross species interaction, cross species co living, and uh, edible landscape. So I was, uh, I was making, marking those points and uh, analyzing. Uh, each of uh, each of uh, those examples this is this is a jelly from india i will not go to details because we don't have too much time this is uh, this is breathing wall from portugal that is actually enabling uh, this fruit tree to grow because otherwise there would be urban heat island but uh, it generates ventilation flow so there would be different examples that are fences or semi interior working spaces storing spaces uh, um, uh, social social spaces, uh, you know, different the different examples. Uh, this uh, this is interesting because you can moderate this. You can you can moderate the, the climate. You can close it and open it and and uh, control the airflow. And uh, there are there is a play with hygroscopicity, so you can get humidified air and so on so on. So there are examples from. Uh, different uh, different cultures. Uh, you can see this is uh, this this example is from Morocco, whilst this example is from Norway. And uh, those uh, those breathing screens uh, actually appear in different different climate zones, but uh, typically typically in extreme ones. So just to 
map the properties. This uh, this uh, facade is breathing when it's uh, when it's uh, dry weather and closing when it's humid weather. So all those uh, all those properties I mapped and uh, then generated this. Uh, this uh, responsive screen that is actually bridging all those properties because we have heat climate extremes and um, cool climate extremes and uh, too much humidity and uh, uh, too, too big droughts uh, in, uh, in central European regions for which this screen was designed. So it was synergizing all those properties based on uh, analysis of those precedents. Getting back to the, to the map, right? This is uh, this is uh, where where this is applied for. This is actually vernacular culture, contemporary vernacular culture from from uh, Kiev, uh, where people build those semi-interior spaces basically because those balconies became unbearable to to stay on. They don't have uh, suitable climate anymore, and this comes uh, from Norwegian culture, for instance, I mean, it appears in many cultures that you have those semi-interior spaces that are moderating uh, the climate. Again, study, study this time in uh, Norwegian cultures when you have those unclimatized semi-interior spaces, uh, uh, which you can unfold and close uh, completely, depends on the, the, the needs uh, you have at the moment. So I did uh, my first mapping where, where I registered uh, different parameters. Uh, it would be like what would be the use, what is the openness and closeness of those spaces, whether, whether they operate around a long haul building or just from uh, parts. And then I was uh, measuring the moisture content, uh, the relative humidity and temperature. What is the difference in semi-interior, interior and exterior spaces? comparing uh, what is what is actually the the climate penetration uh, through through those spaces after that uh, that research generated more research questions so i did this uh, study journey again in uh, norway where there is already many more parameters uh, uh, that uh, that were uh, registered and measured uh, I will just scroll to that. Uh, that is already a question about cross species clothing, which actually I've registered through those uh, journeys and uh, different, uh, different other studies. Uh, I will not go deep into that. This is example, similar, similar example from Cappadocia, uh, registering uh, that's, a, that's a culture that lived together with uh, pigeons. And uh, actually this example is uh, these people lived in cave dwellings, uh, then they were overrun uh, by Muslim culture that uh, started to build those semi-interior spaces on top. And what is uh, beautiful about that, that it is uh, uh, Cappadocia is uh, semi-desert climate, uh, which actually it, it has very cold winters, very, very hot summers, and uh, then, uh, then mild uh, spring and autumn. So this Arabic culture lived on the semi-interior spaces uh, uh, during spring and autumn and uh, lived in the caves uh, built by the previous culture uh, uh, during summer and uh, winter. What this culture was specific is that they lived together with pigeons which were gener uh, that were connected by chimneys that generated ventilation flow thanks to this symbiosis between other species. This, so this, uh, this, would be, this would be the pigeon houses uh, on top and this would be the human dwellings uh, uh, lower down and this is interconnected by ventilation chimneys. So I have been studying uh, what is the ventilation flow, what is the orientation, what is, uh, what is, uh, I will not go into detail just to, to show you gigamapping, which then all of those different analyses of precedents uh, got um, synergized into competition entry which uh, where, we, where we used uh, the ventilation flows through Cappadocian caves whilst using the responsive wood concept. Uh, so there, there are different climate zones uh, airing, uh, uh, generating ventilation flows. So it's just uh, to uh, conclude uh, this, uh, this part, uh, architecture design integrates feedback loops. It's, it is a design speculation and it is the analysis. This uh, requires feedback loops of both individual and collaborative approach. So what you will be doing is that you will uh, decide your expertise you want to analyze on your precedents and finding relation, which means, uh, for instance, climate comfort is generated uh, by uh, integration of relative humidity, temperature, and uh, 
uh, airflow. So by analyzing those, you actually connect those together and uh, find out whether there is good climate comfort or not. Now I would like to get to to the presentation what what you will be doing in in uh, in uh, the the analysis of precedents. So similar similar like in my in my uh, unit, uh, you will first be asked to draw a minimap a minimap of your own interest within the selected precedents and those precedents will be selected based on uh, your units so you will be you will be mapping uh, mapping your interest and uh, uh, mapping uh, going to site and getting real life uh, real life data and analyzing analyzing the field uh, this uh, this uh, will be combined with model making so you will be making models of your precedents and actually analyzing you can pick uh, the things you want to analyze whether it's material sunlight uh, things like this uh, and you will be putting th these uh, students analyzed uh, sunlight for instance uh, uh, so that you will be putting together into collective gigamap again this time it won't be physical one, it will be in a in mirror platform and you will be relating your findings uh, based on uh, your, your uh, precedents, you will be in the, in the groups. And what we will be doing, every session will start with your presentation, so everybody will, be, be, will get updated by collective knowledge and you can get idea, shared ideas and uh, gain uh, ideas from each other. So this is, uh, this is the this is the gigam of the students uh, th this team uh, this team developed uh, synergizing the relative humidity temperature culture uh, color of the facade material light uh, they analyzed different properties uh, based on uh, each student and ha had to find the relationships and interpret what those relationships uh, mean uh, mean together uh, getting uh, getting here uh, this uh, you will be having writing exercise this time uh, this time it won't be essay you will actually try to write academic paper uh, the students last year could choose whether they want to write essay or academic paper this time we will be all uh, all I'm trying to uh, advance academic paper and this year you will be you will be actually reflecting on the methodology what you have learned through analyzing the precedent so you would you would be writing personal reflection through the research you have been doing through analyzing the precedents and how you integrate it into into your unit so this uh, this uh, this student actually did that he analyzed what was his mapping and how those things realized and uh, finding uh, interpreting the relationships and uh, uh, sort of uh, analyzing the methodology of gigamapping and of, of his uh, learning curve and uh, then uh, then he developed uh, his uh, essay i will get to that uh, later this is uh, this will be workshop by shimuraman who will who will teach you how to do how to analyze through space syntax and uh, the space syntax will be will be for both for your for your precedence location and for your unit so you will learn how to how to generate space syntax for for those two those two cases and then compare the two cases and actually have to come with the interpretation what are the similarities differences and so uh, so on uh, this uh, we will skip this year so there is a there is a summary map uh, when, uh, when the student summarized what, what he has been doing. Uh, and uh, here he has written individual reflection. That's uh, everybody at the end of the portfolio has to write individual reflection, how, uh, how this course was uh, useful, what did they learn, what was surprising, what was new. Basically, basically writing on reflection and doing a gigamap of all the exercises that have uh, been done so then uh, then you develop your individual gigamap based uh, based on uh, the collaborative knowledge so you you summarize it uh, for your own so that is uh, that is uh, 
one portfolio I would like to, if we have enough, do we have enough time, Federico? I would like to show one more to just to show how it can look different. Uh, yes, you can. Yes, yes, it's possible. Of course, you can. You can extend yourself a bit. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have too much time because in uh, in twenty minutes I have to be somewhere else. But uh, let's just uh, scroll through, g give you an example how how this uh, this could be done different way. So this uh, this student was analyzing uh, uh, wind ventilation. So this is uh, this is his uh, minimap when he was mapping with anemometer in uh, San Fagans. So that was that time the precedence. Uh, as I said, we will have uh, now precedence uh, related to the unit. Uh, he has been studying the fields, uh, field and uh, the location, starting to get understand what is the the vortexis orientation difference, what is uh, what is the wind map for for the region, things uh, things like this. Uh, uh, then, then uh, he explains what is the what is the uh, methodology of the research, and uh, here again uh, the model making where where the students analyzed uh, light, uh, space uh, space syntax, uh, and uh, then writing exercise. All students for their writing exercise were asked to draw graphical abstract uh, to learn how to structure their writing. This is uh, this is the explanation of the gigamap. What uh, what uh, what are the different uh, different relations, and uh, this is uh, this is the explanation of his responsibility within the within the team. And this is uh, this is his writing exercise where where he actually in this case he was reflecting on uh, on the wind flow, uh, learning learning more about uh, about the field. Was this time uh, you will be reflecting on the methodology of analyzing uh, precedence and uh, relating it to the design research. So uh, here he reflects, uh, self-reflect summary, explaining what he, what was his learning part, uh, what he learned, didn't learn, uh, what uh, I, I asked students to put a critic as well. So it's uh, it's. Um, Basically, that's that's a message for me. What to improve? And uh, as you see, we have improvements uh, this year. So, so I reflect on what uh, what you write uh, will be addressed uh, next year. So this uh, this is uh, his uh, references, and this is uh, the Gigamap synergizing uh, everything he has been uh, doing uh, within uh, within this module. So, yes. So that's uh, that's it. I am happy to take some questions. Okay, any questions for analysis of precedence uh, introduction? You can either, as uh, we we'll, we'll said, we get, you can either uh, ask the question directly live or on the chat. And they need to have time to digest, maybe. <laughs> I think that is, a, that is a thing, isn't it? They are, they are yeah, becoming was, silent just because, a of lot course, of that is very difficult. That is very typical, guys, that at the beginning, of course, you need to figure out, you need to reflect on all the things that now we are uh, throwing to you, isn't it? Therefore, uh, take your time, take your time, reflect on all those things. Please visit all the, all the different, uh, you need to go to Learning Central and see what is very important at that stage is to go to the unit briefs, okay? where I said there they are. So Learning Central, uh, Architecture Design Research module, uh, on the left hand menu, Learning Materials, you will find the unit briefs. And there uh, you, need to, you need to read them carefully beforehand, before Monday. Then- Okay, there is uh, one please. question, if I yeah, can there is. just- there okay. is. Uh, I would like to ask whether our analysis of precedence should uh, should be related to some special fields like materials culture. You know what? Uh, what is uh, what is actually? I always believe, as I discussed about uh, generating your own universe. So you pick up your 
your your field you want to analyze and you are free to use sensors or or things you want you will be uh, analyzing real life you are free to pick uh, what you want to analyze and what you uh, how you want to analyze that but of course get, getting advices not not that you will be completely on your own but the first question is from you what you want to analyze and how you want to analyze it and then you will be put together in the teams so who will be having the same precedence and you will be relating the things you have been mapping and how you have been mapping generating collective knowledge just related in my design i'm I'm not sure if I understand exactly the question. It should be related to your design, of course. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is a core module that should support uh, your uh, your design research. So everything you do should be actually useful for uh, for your unit and uh, for your own interest, which you want to develop in your design research. It will be your work. Uh, after you graduate, you will be searching for job or building your own NGO or whatever you want to do, you should develop your skills based on what you want to do in your life. So that's why I'm asking uh, to actually express your own interests, show us your interests, and we will help you to develop them. It is about you, it is not about us. Okay, meanwhile, when um, maybe other students are thinking about uh, some other questions, I have something uh, to say. Okay, so uh, the thing is that students, can you please put your complete name uh, on your screens? Because this is our only introduction to you, uh, that we can see your name, we cannot, we, we cannot recognize your faces yet. And if we don't see your name, for example, someone is uh, uh, written iPhone, so I don't know who that person is. So please complete your uh, write your complete names, not nicknames as well, because uh, this is the only way for us now to keep a track of who is attending and who is not attending. And uh, the other thing is that I want to add something about uh, Learning Central. Um, Federico has mentioned three times about uh, how you can find a unit description in the learning materials, but also the, uh, I want to add as well that you can, uh, for example, today's section. Uh, session and yesterday's session we are recording them and we are putting them uh, in learning central so you can find those as well and uh, it is under under um, uh, let me just tell you the exact term learning um, record learn plus recordings okay yeah so please uh, go go to those uh, resources and get yourself familiarized with them because it is very important for you to... Okay, there is there is a question about the timing. Uh, the final submission, I believe, it is 22nd of uh, February. You can, uh, under analysis of precedence, my timetable, you can find uh, every step uh, you will be doing uh, each uh, each week. Uh, and of course, we will start uh, next, uh, next Friday, where uh, I will tell you more briefly uh, how to work. Okay. Meanwhile, I also want to show something as well. As this is a lot of students are having this problem. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you. So students, as some of you are reporting that you cannot see the bar on the left hand side. So it can just be a matter of one click. As you can see, my bar is gone right now. But if I just click on it, it appears. So it can be just a problem of you exploring that feature that probably the bar is still there and uh, the, uh, the features are still there, but you're not probably exploring it. Maybe it is collapsed and you just have to click it. And these are the uh, things that you need to explore, learning materials and learn plus recordings. So in learning materials, you will find these unit descriptions and in learn plus recordings, you will have all the sessions that we are having these days and as well, it is appearing as well as the recording resources from the last year as well. So please explore these two features. Okay, I will stop sharing. Okay, okay, so probably, probably if there isn't, if there isn't 
have you got any any final burning questions because now we need to we need probably to conclude because we need to go to other to other meetings and other activities that we've got is there any final question that you'd like to ask you can ask, of course on friday uh when uh, i will have q and a's on on friday not this friday next friday where we have our so you can you can digest uh, digest see the presentations again and then uh, then uh, ask uh, ask uh, more questions exactly so i think that it's a very good idea to come prepared for monday session by digesting all the different uh, asynchronous resources therefore when we are talking about asynchronous that weird word is basically the recorded resources that are provided to you as well our uh, our presentations in mad the one mine from from monday and as well hours from uh, from today and come prepared for those questions uh, on the units by digesting as well the unit briefs that are available in learning central as we commented and on the following Friday to Marie on Analysis Presence. Okay, so let's uh, wrap up the session here.